Ken Reed joins us, former delegate. And uh, Ken, good to see you again, man. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. We're, We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ken, uh, also, you ran for a higher office this past uh, election season as well. Pretty good showing in a tough competitive field. Uh, yes, I did. I ran for uh, the Secretary of State's office, and uh, a couple things had to fall into place for, for that to work for an Eastern Panhandle person to win that seat. The first thing that had to happen is the Eastern Panhandle had to show up, and that didn't happen, uh, especially in Berkeley County. The mm-hmm. showing was very, very low. Uh, and the second thing that had to happen is that the other three candidates had to split the vote in the Canal Valley. If one of them started taking that the numbers didn't add up so neither of those things happened so yeah the eastern panhandle has had a reputation for being a poor turnout area for quite some time and there was a pretty decent turnout during the last presidential election but otherwise that's the anomaly any idea why voters don't make that enough voters don't make the effort that is an incredibly good question so that question was asked in raleigh uh the city of Raleigh in Beckley County to one of my opponents about how do you get, how can you increase the voter turnout? And the answer was this, the same old, you know, school stuff. But I had a, a situation at me. So I was up in the, I was up in the Canary Girl doing my book work and one of the vendors came in and this was early in the morning, about seven o'clock in the morning. And he turned around and I looked at him. He, he, he's from Berkeley County. And he looked at me, he goes, I think you're going to make an awesome secretary of state. And this was during the early voting period. And I looked at him and I said, well, I I appreciate your vote. He just stopped dead, looked at me and said, well, I don't vote. And I just, I I was stunned. I was like, well, I I can't win if you don't vote. So then I asked him, I said, why don't you vote? And what he said was he doesn't understand it. He doesn't understand the process of politics or the how to vote or he just doesn't understand all of it. So he just doesn't do it. And I asked him, I said, well, you can just vote for me. You can leave everything else blank, just go and vote for me. (laughs) And uh, he said, I just, I don't, I don't vote. And I said, I looked at him, I said, I can't win if you don't vote. It's just that simple. A doesn't get to B if you do not go in and vote. So in my ADHD brain, that has been playing over and over in my mind, especially with a 17, 18% turnout in Berkeley County. Uh, the answer to that question, I think, is how do you get is I think you have to go into high schools with these actual machines and you have to physically let them push the buttons and go through the system. Because right now you go in there, and they, they take you to the machine and they kind of work your way through it. But maybe we should increase the education level on how to actually vote, take those machines into the school systems, um, have one maybe a test machine in the polling places where say you have an elderly person come in who who's confused they can actually go through the whole process of the test machine so they feel comfortable with it before they go actually into the the area to vote but but can that avoids the issue that in the other parts of the state 42 to 45 percent turnout which is not great no 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 but that my, my, my point is the point, what you're saying can should equally apply to all parts of the state but other parts of the state do not have a good turnout but they're much better than what we have in berkeley county I, a lot of the people i think a lot of it has to do with in the eastern panhandle it has to do with the, the the amount of negativity that goes on up here the there's a mass majority in the middle who just doesn't want anything to do with it and a lot of those people work in dc they commute so they just go back and go back to their lives and they and they don't think nothing of it and I, I think that might be a part of it too for up here but if you can educate these people from the beginning to not be afraid or intimidated by voting the machines i mean i never even thought about that avenue until he actually said it i just don't understand so if you can break that down i suspect that goes to a very large proportion of our population. And I I would argue, Ken, that it isn't necessarily the absolute, the, the technology of it. It's um, people taking the time to get informed. And how do you do that nowadays? Like Bill was saying earlier, you know, you have these um, vast social media campaigns, and but they don't filter out 
um, you know, they give you what the candidate puts out there, which is fine and good, but you don't necessarily have all of the vehicles that you used to have, this radio station excluded, but, you know, um, you know, the same kind of reporting, if you will, by local media um, that covers that kind of thing. That has gone by the wayside, oh, even I Even us, we don't really have a news department. Right. You know, and if you, we used to have a news department, but you don't. So mm. you don't have, we don't have people that are around the ground covering stories and coming back and reporting on it and on a regular basis. This show effectively functions as our news gatherer. Mm-hmm. But except, and I, the point that you made, Ken, I... I, I believe, and we have such a large percent of our population that do not live in Berkeley or Jefferson County. They they commute back and forth, and these folks historically have not been as engaged as what the people that live and work here or work here. But that still, uh, except for that reason, I have not heard a good reason why other counties, many other counties in the state, have a significantly larger turnout than what we do in the Eastern Panhandle. And this year was not unique. This is consistent with the last several years. Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer for you there. Yeah. All, all I know is that I was told, and I yeah. believe this mm-hmm. guy, that he doesn't understand the process. So if you can break that down and figure out what that means, whether it's the machines or maybe it's the what you're saying, the information they're getting. Uh, I mean, basically, everybody's getting their news from social media now, and there's no filters on this stuff. You can pretty much put out whatever you want, yep. whenever you want, and as long as people believe what you're saying, that's, that's the news. That's what they're going to believe, whether it's true or not. And um, we got in a discussion about AI in uh, one of the central West Virginia places, and I... I I have a lot of uh, fear of AI going forward in the election process, especially with there's no handrails anywhere else. Uh, the, the whole manipulation of voices and manipulation of – it gives a lot of power to certain people who run certain venues. Mm-hmm. And uh, and do we have any effective guardrails in place? There's been a lot of discussion about it, but I don't think there's been any legislation that would establish an effective guardrail, or I, has there been? I don't think there has been yet. I think there is a there's a committee formed to look at that uh, going forward. But like I said, I, I haven't been down there for a couple of years, so I don't know exactly who's on that committee or well, I was talking about nationwide as opposed to just uh, statewide. But we got a election coming up in the in the fall that's going to be, let's say, for lack of a better word, very intense. It's going to be ripe for AI to to influence it. And I don't know if we have anything in place to really uh, uh, mitigate some there, of the, There is not. Yeah. There, there's nothing in place. I it, think it came about so quickly. And um, I listened to a gentleman yesterday um, an attorney who was talking to a group of fundraisers about using AI in that um, in that venue, and he was talking about how important it was to have procedures and policies in place, not just in the fundraising world, but in the whole nonprofit sector. Um, and Bill sits on a bunch of boards. Have you seen any AI policies, procedures approved by? any of the boards that you sit on no absolutely not there's See? more more concern about uh crypto security that's right uh, but there's not very You're much right. about ai so mm-hmm. ken let's talk about senator charles trump's soon to be vacated seat as he assumes his seat on the supreme court he was uncontested and he'll automatically go there is basically how that's going to work uh that creates a vacant seat out of the morgan county area and the, the greater area that uh, the counties that cover that seat too uh, you have interest in that seat. I do. I do have interest in that seat. Uh, I, I believe that seat should go to somebody from Morgan County. Uh, Charles was from Morgan County. That district, when we divided it up, which I was a part of back when we did that, is a, just a part of Hampshire County, all of Morgan, and a part of Berkeley. And there's already a senator from Berkeley County. You can't have two senators from the same county, which leaves Hampshire and Morgan County. Going forward, Hampshire County can't keep that Senate seat, even if somebody was appointed from Hampshire County. There's just not enough votes over there. Um, so I think automatically it should go to somebody in Morgan County. And uh, I'm going to throw my hat into that ring to uh, 
How does the process work, Ken? Take us from step one. Does it have to be recommended by, and then the governor makes a decision? Yeah, actually, it's very. It's a little more complicated than that. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, there's uh, the, the, the executive committee is from each county that has a senatorial district. So it's Hampshire, Morgan, and Berkeley County. Those executive committees are going to put forth two people to create a senatorial committee. So there will be two from Berkeley, two from Morgan, and two from Hampshire. They have to come up with three names. Those three names then get submitted to the governor, and then the governor chooses. But it's going to be interesting, depending on when Charles resigns. If he resigns in December, it may be Jim Justice who decides that seat. If he waits till January 1st to resign, it could be the next governor, whoever that may be. And there's two years left on that seat? There's two years left on that seat. That's correct. And when you say um, each of the committees gets three um, three nominees, so to speak. No, the one committee has to come up with three names. So the six people on that committee, two from okay. Berkeley, two from Morgan, two from Hampshire, have to come up with three names. Total. Only three. Only three names. And but those, could there be more? No, I do not believe there Just be more. three. Just three. And then okay. the governor can choose from those three names. And it has to be a Republican because Charlie was a Charles. Was it a has to be a Republican yeah. and it has to be somebody from Morgan County yeah. or Hampshire yeah. County. Yeah. Now, the obvious name out there besides yours is Daryl Coles, but I'm told that he does not have interest in the seat. Not by him, unofficially through <laughs> somebody else. Have you heard the same? Uh, yeah, actually, I've been waiting to, to let Daryl decide. Daryl actually would be probably the best candidate that Morgan County could put forth for that senatorial seat. Uh, I always thought that. So Daryl and I talked about it, and he was sitting on the fence for a very long time, but he, he called me the other day and said that he's officially out. He, did, he decided he doesn't want to go down that road. Uh, the uh, delegate, George Miller, from the area, does, have you talked to him at all, Ken? I have not talked to George uh, at all. Uh, George keeps to himself pretty much. I don't see him a whole he lot. He doesn't talk to me either, so, or, or even, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I don't know if he has interest in the in that seat or not. Do you? I, I heard him. I, anybody who's in politics usually wants to move up to the Senate from the delegates. I suspect he probably does. Yeah. So what's the is there is there like a a campaigning amongst the committee process to even get your name on the list to be considered? How does that work? It, that is a different political game altogether from being elected. So you have these d d two from Berkeley, two from Morgan, and two from Hampshire. Uh, it, like the committee at Morgan, they haven't even appointed those two yet. So you don't even know who those are. I, I think for the most part, it's just going to run its course and it's going to it's going to do what it's going to do. Why yeah. do you, Why do you want to be a state senator, Ken? I I love public service. Uh, I still I, I think I still have a little bit left in me. Um, I uh, I look at that district and I think to myself that uh, I could still do good for the Eastern Panhandle. You were basically districted out by yourself from the House of Delegates, correct? I, I did. I uh, I so and. Four years ago when we redistricted, I was so worried about Morgan County losing a delegate that I shoved basically my whole 59th district into Georgia's district. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that way, that way, if 90% is for Morgan County, no matter what happens, there will always be a Morgan County delegate. If not, there could have been, like Hedgesville area was growing so fast that the population could have out in five years from that point could have outdone Morgan County. And then you would end up with another Berkeley County mm -hmm. delegate, a Hampshire County delegate, because that's where it was pushed the other way and no Morgan County delegate. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't want that to happen. Going back to the nominees, do you have any idea at all? Have you heard other names? We've mentioned uh, three. Have you heard any other names? I've heard the Hampshire County uh, people really see an opportunity here, and I think I think Darren wants to to go for that seat. And I heard Ruth Rowan possibly might want to go okay. for that. Okay, Ruth Rowan was the county uh, was a delegate for quite a while. Yeah, a long, long time. Yeah, very, who's very the person nice you mentioned? Darren who? Uh, Darren Thorne. He's a, he's the delegate up there now. Okay, I've heard that name thrown out there too. Yeah, he's I've met him a couple times. He's a very nice man. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ken, what were you working on in the House that you didn't get finished that you'd like to see continued if you're able to get back in the Senate? Uh, I had quite a few bills that, well, I, I went through a different tack for most people. I ran a lot of bills under other people's names because that they no freshman uh, gets any bills through. So I, I managed to get a bunch through that just without my name on it. But then there was some that had my name on it. And I'll give you an example. The one that did make it through after I left is the uh, two-year um, inspection sticker. I had uh, cut a deal with the state police because the the, the the problem was always with the money 
because that goes to their funds. And they did always oppose it, but I told them we'd just double the money and go two years, and they didn't have a problem with it. But then it got stuck in infrastructure. Uh, it seemed like all my bills got stuck in infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. The uh, uh, and, and then, like, the next following year, somebody picked it up and then ran with it, and it, it, it got passed. And there, there, there was quite a few. I had a I, – I, I, I tried to look for bills that help people. You know, I actually I had an opt – an opt-in bill that almost made it through judiciary when I was down there. I was watching TV one time, and um, uh, there was a disclaimer that popped up. It says that you had to actually opt in for all your data to be sold instead of an opt-out. So if you an opt-out is inherently good for them and not good for you because people don't read any of that stuff. Sure. They just check mark stuff. But it was an opt-in, and I thought, you know – Maybe that might be a good way to do it. And uh, so I, I created a bill and sent it through. And the I didn't think much of it, but uh, one of the lawyers who worked for judiciary picked the bill up and called me up. And she, he was basically asking me who was behind this, you know, what corporation is behind this. And I'm like, hey, believe it or not, there's no nobody came to me. This is just something that I thought would be good for the, the people uh, of West Virginia to be able to opt out of this stuff because your data is being sold left and right, oh, yeah. and there's nothing you can do about it. There was a there was a huge healthcare data breach uh, about three or four months ago. Shut it shut it, it shut me down. I tell you that much. It, it shut down all the switches, all whatnot. A third of the country's data was stolen. Healthcare data, all of it, and I suspect it's been probably sold three or four times already. Um, and uh, we we end up moving to different switches, and now they're fighting over who has to contact all these people to let them know that you know yeah, all their data is gone. That that's like a, the new mailbox sport is, is to go and, and get your mailbox, and it's the newest letter of what credit monitoring system you're being provided for your because mm. somebody else screwed up and let your data go. Yeah, it it I, I'm against all these massive monopolies in just about every field because then what happens is they they concentrate all this data in one place, and then and then you have these bad actors going after that one, and then they have it all. So if you if you break that up into a, a, a middle range where you have big but yet smaller companies they can't get to instead of a third of the country you know maybe they only got the sixth or a tenth of the country's yeah. data uh but uh, right now the there seems to be no um desire for the current uh administration to stop these monopolies from occurring so just uh, got a piece of news from uh, Colin, our producer, Jerry West, has uh, just been announced. Jerry West passed away at the oh. age of 86. I uh, just saw that uh, breaking at 946 about seven minutes ago. Uh, Jerry West passing away at age 86. Mr. West Virginia. Yeah. 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 I played uh, basketball in Stansbury Hall when it was still there. Yeah. And that's where he played at, yeah. Uh, also, I was uh, given this information uh, a little bit ago, and I wanted to pass this along, too. It came from uh, Judy Boykin, and um, I, I got to find the text here uh, quickly. Reverend Ed Grove has passed. He passed June 4th. Mm -hmm. They've announced the visitation is Friday, June 14, at Trinity United Methodist Church. The service is Saturday the 15th. That's for uh, Reverend Ed Grove. It was a great guy. So many people thought so, you know. A wonderful so man. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, Ken Reed is our guest here, and as uh, we were discussing, Senator Charles Trump will be a Supreme Court Justice, which is uh, very cool for the Eastern Panhandle, as it appears that, I, I don't even know if we've had a Supreme Court Justice from the Panhandle before. Strong possibility we'll have a governor from the Panhandle in the very near future, but either way, that creates a seat open for the state Senate, and Ken Reed has thrown his hat in the ring. Right now, the selection committee hasn't been formed, but it's June, and they've got to do something pretty quickly, Ken, because the year's about half over. Correct. Any inclination as to when this committee will be formed and finalized? Uh, hopefully as soon as possible. As soon as possible. I know Berkeley County, I think, already has their two people chosen, and I, I suspect. Do you know who they are? Are you liberty to say? Uh, I, I'm not liberty. I've okay. talked to the Berkeley County people. Fair enough. I'm talking Fair to them. Enough, yeah. um, the Morgan County still has to form their committee, and uh, Hampshire County, I'm not really sure what's going on up there. Is so, there oh, ahead, if you are the appointee, what is the what's the first thing that you want to work on? 
Uh, if you're point, you mean if you get appointed to that, that seat, I want we'll to see where it all falls out. There's going to be a um, massive shuffling ah. down of, in the Senate of committees. Of committees, yeah, yeah. Uh, the current Health Senate Committee Chair lost this past session. He was from the Northern Panhandle. I don't think there's other than uh, I think there's a physical therapist down there. I don't think there's now nah, and there's a physician. I don't think there's a whole lot of other healthcare people there. Uh, Takuko is a physician, and I think he's the House Majority Leader right now. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the Senate. I'm still stuck in the House. Mm -hmm. The Senate Majority Leader, and I'm not sure how all that's going to play. So we'll see. We'll see how all that yeah. plays out because yeah. that uh, that matters. Mm -hmm. That matters a lot in the, the game of politics. I would imagine, though, uh, of the once the committee is formed, there will be at least one representative from Morgan and one representative from Hardy of those three that's going forward. Uh, Hampshire County. Hampshire. I yeah. said Hardy. I meant Hampshire, yeah. I, I, to come up with three names is actually probably harder than you think because yeah. you've got to be able to leave. I mean, re really, think about it. You've got... You have to spend 60 days in Charleston. Exactly. And, you, I and mean, then some. And mm -hmm. then some. And So you have to be able to just get up and leave, and that, that marks a lot of probably qualified people out because they just can't leave their job mm -hmm. um and the so i don't know it, ruth i'm pretty sure would be names possibly could be thrown in there yeah. without doubt because I'm, I'm i believe she has definitely shown interest in it ken good to have you in the studio again good thank to you see so you. much appreciate it best of luck to you in your quest to be the next state senator we'll do thanks so much and from morgan county there ken reed and we are back with the final minute